Now, talking about chasing away the blues, a new report out from the Children's Commissioner has warned that social media companies are ignoring the harm that they inflict on children while making billions of pounds of profits from them. Uh, a report based on 250,000 children and their parents has shown, this is by Dame Rachel D'Souza, that the safety of children online remained unacceptably subject to the whim of technology companies amid a delay in new, York's new laws to protect them. Well, let's talk now to Stephen James, who is an award-winning teacher, no less. Stephen, I have been talking about this topic, right, personally, for about mm. four years now. And I said back three, four years ago, I just think it's about time to almost pull the plug on a lot of social media and say, go back to the drawing board, rethink it. You're not doing it right. You're exposing our children to all sorts of horrific harms. You can't turn around and go, oh, it's the parent's responsibility to monitor what they're doing online. I'm sorry, the buck starts with the companies. Buck stops with the companies. And, uh, and people thought I was mad back then talking about the harms of social media and how I thought it was making a load of young people go balmy. Well, at least we're having the conversation right now. Mm. Um, and I must admit that I, she says that no new product should be allowed to be launched by tech giants such as Facebook, Instagram and WhatsApp without it first being tested to ensure it was safe for children. Now, when it comes to adults and free speech on X and so on and so forth, leave that alone. This isn't about clamping down on mm. free speech. But when it comes to kids uh, being exposed to adult content, self-harm material, bullying, uh, all of this brainwashing stuff to tell them they are in the wrong body and do they want breast binders. It's disgusting, I think, what some of these platforms are getting away with. No, no, I, I absolutely agree with you. And some of the things that, that children are seeing are horrific. And the algorithms that are feeding them this information constantly, it, you know, they, they need to be dealt with. Um, but what I would say on the kind of flip side, and you already kind of touched on it a little bit there, is, is parents. Parents have a role to play, absolutely. But also, you know, we as a society, do we want to handcuff our young people um, who ultimately want to innovate? They want that, you know, they've got the world in their hands. They, they want to be able to unpick things, understand the world. And, and, and we're not doing them favours by, by completely cocooning them in, 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 in regulation. So it, it's a bit of a, you know, I, do, do we think China are going to be doing the same thing with their young people or... Or Russia okay, or, okay, so or, if, if or parents America? have got a responsibility, um, yet we don't want to cocoon our kid and say, right, you're not allowed to use social media or interact with computers at all, then where does the responsibility lie? Because to me, that means it has to lie with the tech companies when it comes to minors. And if they're they, allowing they young people, if they're not doing, they're not putting in place, like technology is so far advanced, I'm certain that checks and balances could be put in place. If they're not doing that, if they, if all these dot-com wearing bros, dot-com wearing bros, sandal wearing dot-com bros, uh, with their sort of, you know, mad uh, progressive left-wing ideology, think it's a good thing and a healthy thing that kids to be exposed to all this um, trans content or self-harm or whatever it may be, um, then I'm sorry, someone needs to step in their way and say, that's not good enough. You wouldn't allow, for instance, someone making kids food to put what they want in that kid's food, right? Well, actually, in fact, that yeah. does go on. But you wouldn't necessarily allow that. If someone's running a scout <laughs> group, you wouldn't say, oh, you know, show the kids whatever you want, do all of these things. To me, personally, it comes down to saying to these companies, I don't think they've done enough, they're not trying hard enough, well, and it's just not good enough. Uh, I don't think that Mark Zuckerberg or Nick Clegg are sat there in, in, their, in their ivory towers thinking how they're going to damage children. I, I don't think that exists. You know, we, we, we're kind of othering these uh, these social media companies and saying, you know, they're big evil things when they're, they're parents as well. They're, they have children. So I, I don't believe for one second that they're going out of their way to damage children. I think that the damage is happening. Absolutely. But we've also got to have, when we're looking at responsibility as well, I mean, it starts with with, with yourself too. And, and as a young person, I am sure you were incredibly well behaved. You never pushed the boundaries. You, you, you never did anything you shouldn't. And Ultimately, if you say to children, you can't do this, what are they going to, they're going to find ways around it because children are, are generally quite smart as well. And, you know, we also have a responsibility as parents, as, as, as society, to make sure that children can access these things, but do it safely. So we've all got a responsibility. And I don't think we should be going, 
oh, it's your responsibility, it's your responsibility, and, 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 and nobody taking responsibility, because that's what's happening at the minute. So what is the solution here? Because, yeah, I'm not saying that parents, you know, if parents who just stick their kids in front of a, a tablet and say, access whatever, without any parental restrictions, without having conversations, without monitoring the sort of content their children might be looking at, I would agree with you, that is not good parenting. But at the same time, you know, if you say to your child, I, you know, what is the content on your phone or whatever, then they go to school and someone else has got that content on their phone. It doesn't make the blind blindest bit of difference. I just think when it comes to safeguarding, it still matters. I don't think that I want to be such an extreme, you know, libertarian that I forget the fact that actually as adults who not only parent children, but as a border society is supposed to keep children safe. Yeah, absolutely, and it's all our responsibilities, and this is exactly what I'm saying. We can't pass it off, pass the buck to the, the social media companies. So, so who, well, what is the solution the... then? Who are we supposed well, to be saying, parents, well, okay, do your job, fine. Teachers, do your job. I agree with banning smartphones in schools. But I don't see how they help in lessons at all. Fine, that could be something that schools can do. But surely the social media companies have to do something, because if they don't have age restrictions, and if their algorithms are bombarding kids with really harmful content that's going to you know melt their poor plastic mm. minds they should not be doing that it's and they simple. do they do have those facilities to put the parental locks onto these different things all of them do so your playstations your whatsapps your 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 facebooks your twitter you know you can't join these things unless you're of, of, of the correct age even you know instagram as well and they will always make sure that your parents are aware even snapchat and things like that i mean look at the controls i've got my poor daughter and on her iphone i mean she's 14 and you know everything is locked down and nothing is 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 available unless i choose to make it available why because i'm making a parenting decision that i i don't think she's ready for that yet when she is ready we we will and that's not to say we haven't had uh, instances where she's been a little bit cleverer than me and found ways around these things but that be then becomes a, a teaching moment a parenting moment for you to go oh well why did you do this explain to me the the kind of what could have happened and you have that conversation and i think it, to, to to put it all onto social media companies which is what uh, dame de caesar has done it is is tough and she said what no new products unless it's all tested on tested first i mean that's ridiculous really i mean it's we need to innovate we want to be at the forefront of any kind of innovations as the uk and i, I just don't think handcuffing ourselves um in this way yes protect children yes look after their mental health but we should not be handcuffing ourselves uh, in, in terms of innovation. Yeah, Peter, I'm going to bring you in. I completely agree with, with Stephen James. I, I completely agree with you. I think you're bang on on everything you've said. The problem I have with your argument, Alex, is you're, you're creating a false dichotomy between it's their, their responsibility or theirs. I think it is a, a mixture of everybody's responsibility on this issue. One, one thing that we haven't really talked about in, the, in that exchange there was the government's role in this and what are you really... Uh, saying is harm to children. So obviously we could all agree that right. chest binding, all this stuff, that's well, I, I clear. Put it back but to there you. is a fine line I, between I what you're I put it back to you then. I put it back to mm. you. This whole sort of, you know, trans movement and yeah. kids thinking they're born in the wrong body, which mm. has seen a huge uptick, yes, a huge has. uptick in kids uh, going to places like the Tavistock Clinic. Mm. Where did that come from? How's that spread? Okay, don't get me wrong. I'm not. I, I'm on your side that of this argument. That whole ghoulish, but, monstrous event yes. that's a disgrace mm. in our history, yeah. a disgrace, has been perpetrated yeah. largely by social media. And I think unless we turn around and say, that's got to stop yeah. somehow, I and would the rather... You know, the, mantra, we, the mantra in Silicon we, we, Valley we has allowed, always been mm. move fast and break things. Yeah. I don't think that's okay when the things you're breaking no. are young people. But again, but we, I, we, we, we've, we've allowed these sorry. things to happen. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. We have allowed these things to happen, but what what you're actually asking the government to do is implement something like the online harms bill, which would be a Orwellian power grab. You know, there is a there is a political aspect to this, and this is one of these kind of policy areas which I always think I call uh, paved with good intentions. Do you know where everybody thinks it's about protecting children, but nobody thinks about the consequences of where this could potentially lead us? Um, you know, Stephen's right. They, this would you know this would kill the IT sector in this country Maybe. and well, the innovation you say that. sector. You say it would that, kill but it. There's a big difference between safeguarding children and freedoms for adults. Children aren't allowed to buy alcohol. You've safeguarded mm. kids. Adults, knock yourself out. Give them health warnings, whatever. Mm. I think it should be the same but application. Yeah, the, but again, these companies do have those barriers. It's up to parents to use the barriers and parents to get involved. This is the thing. Too many parents, I, in my opinion, have abdicated that responsibility of mm. educating and protecting their children. It's like, somebody else will do it for me. It's a, it's a, a problem right throughout society. You know, we don't 
we don't take responsibility for very many things and too many times you know, oh the teachers didn't do this or societies didn't do this so blaming society i think is like again is kind of blaming other people for a thing you take you don't take responsibility for you know we and have I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what will yeah. happen what will, what will happen is this will get put onto schools and schools yeah, will end up having will. to deliver Bang this on. Yeah, and this is yet another thing for teachers to police, and the teachers are busy you, enough. You had things like um, teenage pregnancy, mm. anorexia, all those things which are kind of pushed onto schools. Like we're going to start educating and 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 mm. actually, you know, changing society. Whereas you know, children should be there for reading, writing, and arithmetic, and yeah. and, yeah. and and, well, and improving their, their lot in life. But but banning Not... smartphones in schools very quickly because we've got to go to mm. break. Yes or no, banning? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, there we go. Okay, right. Uh, thank you ever so much, Stephen. And uh, what a spicy day! It's something I, I feel very. I don't even mm. have kids, but I feel <laughs> very passionate about this subject. Don't get me started mm. on user-generated porn content.